it's kind of fragile because it, like it's not a very stable piece right. but um it, i just this idea that the baby is carrying the whole family it's just I, I i just find it to be kind of poignant and sure um well i mean you think about it and like we it's always fun to uh I think we always hope that people will view our art and read into it in interesting ways. And I mean, I, I hear that, and I think, well, you know, well, you know, how many times do do people think that having a baby is going to save their relationship, <laughs> yeah. or you know, yeah. you know, oh, we're going to stay together because of you know we have kids or whatever. And so yeah. it's like, you know. Uh, un, yeah, unnecessarily putting all of that pressure on that child right. to like you know right. keep that family unit together. Yeah, and, which is funny because as 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 very biographical a lot of my work is that is not a reflection of my childhood. At, at least I don't think it is. Um, but I. Do I don't know? I just really find it very compelling that just this little baby has to carry the whole family. And, right. Um, it's a little sadistic in a way, <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, yeah, yeah. But speaking of sadistic, that next point, you know, now we're back to the point where you're you're in your studio at Central Track. Yeah. And you decide that you want to go up and down a ladder for five months. Yeah. Eight hours a yeah, day. Yeah. And so that, that seems, yeah, I guess that'd be more I'm masochistic. And yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, I mean, gosh, even like the boots that I covered in pins, that was totally a masochistic thing to do because, you know, piercing. Um, I hope you're using a thimble because that. Well, I, I was, I mean, I, I used to, several types of thimbles but I, I mean I still destroyed my fingers oh. yeah yeah um, but yeah going up and down that ladder was I mean it was <laughs> it, it was pretty masochistic I have to um, I have to agree and um, it was also very exciting though because I mean it was just this giant experiment so you uh, you were at a place where you were asked or you were given the opportunity or the assignment to collaborate with an architect yeah. on a piece or a concept. And if I remember right, your your original idea was what if we can create something that emulates an iris? Uh, so it's like uh, like a yeah. circular form that you know that. Uh, you know, there's an anchor around the outside. There's an interior spot that anchors, and you're sort of creating a web that yeah. radiates around yeah. a, cen- a central hole, right? Right. So, um, when I when Gary Cunningham, the architect, um, and I were sort of meeting and discussing what could we do, um, we were talking about how. Um, both fashion and architecture um, they both are in part about the gaze about seeing something like Mm -hmm. um, or what you're portraying and so we wanted to do something that related to this idea of the gaze and then we were gonna make this whole into um, like we had the the area in Central Track that was right behind the window, mm-hmm. um, or the the, the, wi- the window was hidden. It was sort of like um, there was a wall in front of it, and there was like um, I don't know how to like I have the word in Spanish, but um, anyway, so there was a window, a wall, and we wanted to cut a hole in that wall so that you could see into the space with this idea mm-hmm. about seeing inside and. And then, but it was going to be an eye looking at you, sort of. Um, <laughs> and, but because we live in a very mediated world, we decided to mediate that, um, 
so we ended up so we ended up making this hole in the wall, but we're actually putting making it into a screen. So you okay. So the idea was that you you would have been able to see inside, but not anymore because we're mediating and controlling what you see and what you perceive. Um, <laughs> so the outside eye was sort of uh, taken on by Gary and uh, by Corky, and he made these sort of very literal eye that's sort of looking at you, sort of mm-hmm. like the building is looking at you. And then the inside is this very abstract eye, which is what I took on. Um, and just thinking about what, how I could integrate my material into this um, idea of an inner eye was mm-hmm. what led me into experimenting with with the thread as, uh, as some sort of web or, or, or something. And um, I did this little, I took up like a bu- literally a bucket from Home Depot and I sort of did this conical thing inside it, so like with thread, and it mm-hmm. was sort of like the first of only two maquettes I've ever done. Um, and I was just trying to see how, if, if I could do some sort of conical mm-hmm. shape web uh, with the thread. Right. Um, so when I showed that to Corky, and like, he was able to get this sort of design, this structure that would be able to, you know, replace sort of what the bucket was doing mm-hmm. and hold the thread. And so he designed this conical sort of shape that had the, the hole in the center. And um, anyway, I think... Um, before we actually did the eyes, when I was like, okay, well, what would happen if I actually take this idea and do this whole wall in my studio? Right. And that's when I was like, okay, well, if I, I mean, I used to, I, mean, I remember the, the um, string art from the 70s, um, which I used to be obsessed with when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. I never did, but um, myself, but I remember um, a friend had one like the, in their house right? and I was just obsessed with it and um, so anyway just thinking about that I was like okay maybe I can like if I do this row of nails with some sort of shape that's not flat thing mm-hmm. um, and something interesting might happen and um, I wasn't sure exactly what was going to happen but um, I, I just started going up and down the ladder, and right. um, it. I mean, it started. It took a long time, <laughs> um, but it started sort of taking shape pretty early on, and I was like, sure. "Okay, this is really exciting." So, um, you know, obviously labor intensive. It's in your studio, so. How did the word get out that you had this amazing thing there it, to the point that someone actually wanted to have you come install one so, on, uh, on their side? Um, by the time the, the, the transitive pairing show came along, I was already like about three quarters done with it. Mm-hmm. So I had to install the show, and at the opening... I just had my studio open. I mean, that was a jam-packed opening. Um, so there was a lot of people, and uh, I mean, a lot of people were hanging out in my studio because it was it, it was really sort of captivating. Right. Um, so what happened was um, I was still in grad school. I was again in class with Greg Metz, um, mm-hmm. his gallery class, like his gallery management class. And mm-hmm. um, Danette from Conduit came to talk to us about being a gallery director. And, right. Um, 
And, you know, among the things we, th that were discussed in that class were like, well, what, how do you re recommend that artists approach galleries? Mm -hmm. And she was like, well, make sure that you contact them um, the week after they have an opening because that's the five minutes they're going to have that they're going to be able to pay attention to your email. So sure enough, after the f opening, I was like, hey, um, at the risk of being one of many of the students, like, I have this thing in my studio that I think I w it would be great in your project room. Um, mm -hmm. And sure enough, she was like, oh my God, I actually went to the opening and I was thinking of uh, contacting you. So I'm really happy that you sent me an email. Um, so that was it. And um, that was, um, well, and you know, that was supposed to be like, a year off, you know, because they right. they're scheduled a year in advance. And um, I get like a week later, a call from the net, and she's like, "Hey, how would you feel? We have a, like a hiccup in our schedule. How do you feel about doing it in a month?" And I was like, "Sure, <laughs> I can do it." And um, I, I was like, "Oh my god, what the hell am I gonna do?" Because you know, I don't have you know, 10 weeks to go up and down a ladder. I had to right. do that in a week, like the turnover is a week. Um, so that's when I sort of started. I mean, at, at first I was like, okay, maybe if I have a person at the top, but I was just trying to figure out, like trying to get people to help me mm -hmm. install this. And we couldn't get any people to, to help me. Um, <laughs> so um, I was like, okay, like, and... I still hadn't finished the piece in my studio. It was like a quarter to be done. So mm -hmm. um, I was able to figure like a one-man system to, to do that. And it, it, it worked. Right. <laughs> so I was able to, um, to work from the ground instead of going up and down the ladder. And um, I was able to do it in four and a half days or right. something like that. So this is the point where you either find or invent your telescoping pole that has yep. has a hook on the end, give or take. Yep. And um, and you're able to sort of manipulate that, you know, from a central point instead right. of all that climbing. Yeah. Um, when you're when you're in the middle of threading that back and forth, is it important that you maintain a certain amount of tension? Yeah. You know, otherwise, yeah, because you can't, I guess you can't afford for it to remain loose. I mean, like, how, right. how do you manage that? I mean, are there points or are there points that you tie off the piece? Um, or? I, yes, when I change color. Okay. Um, or when I end up, when I run out of, of thread in the spool. Right. Um, but, you know, there, at the time I was using 2,500 meter spools, so... Uh, now I use 7,000 meter spools, but um, so it doesn't happen as much. Um, so usually at the beginning of the color and at the end of the color. Okay. Um, and I have to keep, um, yeah, pretty steady tension. Um, and, you know, on a piece, like a piece this size is really easy right. by hand. I like this, uh, like um, my studio has like 14 feet. Uh, ceiling and so it's a pretty manageable installation for one person when you start talking about a piece like the Emmon Carter right. where it's a span of 40 feet um, it, it, it's a lot trickier because yeah. um, uh, the tension then has to um, be handled by someone so the person, right. some something that large, I, uh, like I might be able to reach one side with my um, with my extension pole, but the other side needs to be done by a person sure. reaching and taking.